Good morning, dear friends. This is a good day because the Lord has given us. And as we begin this day, let us begin with a short meditation from God's Word. Today's meditation has to do with the methods to be employed in receiving answers to our prayers. Based on Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. There are three words used here, three verbs. Ask, seek, and knock. Only those who exercise uh, patience and perseverance seems to receive what they ask for. It is because God wants to know how desperate you are and how earnest you are and how serious you are in seeking God's face in prayer. And uh, one very important thing is to be kept in mind when we ask. The purpose for which you are asking anything. What is your intention? Psalmist once prayed, O oh my Lord, my God, open my eyes. And God's uh, ask, count, question is, why should I open your eyes and heal your eyes? And the psalmist answer was, that I may see the wonders of your word. Now that is a good purpose. That is absolutely for God's glory. So the purpose of your prayer and the answers to prayer must be very clear. It's, there should be no selfishness involved in receiving the answer. It must be absolutely for the glory and honor of our Lord and our God. Our purpose in life should be always to lift up and project Jesus Christ as the one and only one worthy of our praise and worthy of, our, of, 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 of uh, serving him. And uh, so there are these uh, three methods to be used. Number one, ask. Now, asking implies a consciousness of her need and the belief that God will hear and answer our prayer. And the second method is seeking. Now, seeking implies earnest petitioning along with obedience to God's will. Remember what Jesus told his disciples and the crowd which followed him. He said, it is not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, who shall be blessed and enter into my kingdom. But it is everyone who does my Father's will who shall be blessed and enter into the kingdom of God. Now this is very important for us to keep in mind. And the third method is knocking. Now knocking implies perseverance in coming to God even when he does not seem to uh, quickly respond to our prayer. Even to the point or to the extent that we feel he is ignoring us or he is not interested in our prayer. Another point to notice is the Greek word used in verse 8, in that verb, uh, is is uh, uh, is uh, continuous expresses a continuous action in asking and seeking and knocking. In other words, verse eight must be read this way: It is everyone who keeps on asking shall receive; everyone who keeps on seeking shall find. Everyone who keeps on knocking, sh the door shall be opened to him. Now that is what I meant. And so it is a continuous action involved in our approaching to God and asking, seeking, and knocking. Now it must be continuous until the, uh, we, 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 we receive what we are asking, until we find what we are seeking, until we, uh, our, the door is opened 
to us. And uh, that, that, that is very important. Now, avoid being casual and general in our prayers. Be earnest and specific. Very clear what we are asking. It is not generally asking, uh, sometimes people come to me after the church service and the pastor pray for me. And it's a prayer for you for what? What can I pray for you? Well, just bless me. Now what blessing? Just like that. Now that is, that is, that is not prayer. You need to be very specific and very definite up to the point of what you are asking. If you really want a, want, a, want a vehicle, for example, you be very specific. You can even tell God the color and the, how many seating, etc. Be specific. And that is very, very important. Christ's assurance that those who ask will receive uh, what they ask is based on uh, a few things which are very important for us to remember. Number one, based on seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Please remember that. It is based on that. If that is your, your greatest uh, burden of prayer, then you may confidently ask. Secondly, uh, the reference to that is uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And secondly, recognizing God's fatherly uh, goodness and love. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, and chapter 7, verse 11, and the Gospel according to St. John chapter 15, verse 16. And thirdly, praying according to God's will. You read Mark chapter 11, verse 24, and 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. According to God's will, that means God has a will, and He knows what you need, and He knows what you must have, and uh, there are promises in God's word concerning the thing that you want to ask. So, Knowledge of God's word is very important even in our prayer life. Let your prayer be filled with God's word. And why do you pray, Lord? Because you have promised that I am the Lord who heals you. So if you are praying for healing, you quote that verse that is according to God's will. And if you pray for the salvation of souls, you have promises in God's word that uh, pray the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And there are souls waiting to, to come to the kingdom of God. So praying for souls, salvation is according to God's will, etc. And uh, then, um, number four, you must maintain an intimate relationship and love with Jesus Christ. Gospel according to St. John chapter 15, verse 7. And fifthly, obeying Christ is very important in getting an answer from God. First John chapter 3, verse 22. I would like you to read these passages for yourself soon after this meditation this morning. Pray according to God's will. Now, one important thing you can do to pray according to God's will is, pray the prayers of the Apostle Paul in uh, Ephesians and Colossians, these epistles. He prayed for the believers. He prayed, uh, you, 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 you pray for yourself and you pray for your fellow brothers and sisters in the church, in the fellowship. And um, if you study or read at least the prayers of the Apostle Paul, you will notice that he does not pray for any earthly uh, luxury things for themselves, for, 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 for the believers. What he prays is all has to do 
with their relationship with Jesus Christ and growing in the understanding of God's plan and purposes for people's life and for yourself and everything you will discover from God's word. So I pray that you will change your prayers. You know, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus taught us, do not worry about your earthly needs, what you shall eat and what you shall drink and what you shall clothe with. He said, you don't have to worry about these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. They will come to you. You don't have to struggle for it. You don't even have to ask it because your heavenly father knows what you are in need of in this earthly life. But your greatest burden and desire be the kingdom of God. That means the rule of God in your personal life, in your family life, in your church, in your city, in your country. And so when you keep the interest of God foremost in your mind and in your heart, then you can be guaranteed that your prayers will be heard and answered. And you can be rich in the faith. And you can be the happiest person in the world. God bless you as you follow the scriptural pattern of asking anything. And you will not get tired. And you will be blessed. The Lord bless you today. And uh, have a good day. And a victorious living and a happy living. Because God loves you and is with you. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for guiding us as your children by the Holy Spirit in the act of praying. That we shall pray the right kind of prayers that will please you. Pray according to your will and pray God's word and his promises in your word. That we may receive what we ask for. For your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.